Welcome to Animals at Work, the show that's got everything. Well, mostly animals at work. Duh. All over the planet, there are millions of animals that have jobs. Ah! This is the show that brings you the funniest, coolest, and most bizarre animals at work. Don't go anywhere, it's gonna be wild. Coming up, Lucky the Sheep makes a canoe out of poo. And Diesel the Bulldog learned a new skateboard trick. And the Fanimals take on their biggest challenge yet. But now it's showtime. I like the poo and the poo 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 poo. Oh hi. Uh, this is not what it looks like. Really, it isn't. Um, actually, it is. You've caught me, John Barrowman, shoveling sheep poop. <coughs> this actually can be very useful, and there's an animal at work whose job it is just to, well, to do the job. Our first animal at work is in Snowdonia in North Wales. <laughs> Lucky may look like a normal Welsh mountain sheep, but she's a lot, lot more. Lucky is responsible for super poo! That's right, super poo! Using a secret recipe, Lucky's droppings are turned into an incredibly earth-friendly paper. Thanks to Lucky's grazing, her poo is 50% grass, giving it the high quality fibers which are ideal for making paper. So far, Lucky's poo makes writing paper, envelopes, and even greeting cards. But Lucky always wants to go one better, and her latest creation has certainly done that. Lucky's help make a poo canoe! But there's been a disaster. On its first attempt in the water, the canoe sprung a leak and started sinking. Thankfully, repairs have been carried out, and this afternoon the boat will be hitting the water again. Nobody has ever actually built a boat out of uh, poo before. I won't lie to you, I'm very anxious, I'm very nervous. I've spent half my time training with the paddle and half my time training swim. So today is a massive day, and Lucky couldn't be more nervous. Will her canoe float? or sink. And there's more than just personal pride invested in the boat. For Lucky and the canoe builders, it's the chance to fulfill a lifelong dream of going to France. But there's a slight problem. Before Lucky can see her boat launch, there's her daily paper making to be done. If today's paper quota isn't met, then there's no canoe testing for Lucky. So she needs to get cracking and make some paper. Unfortunately, paper making is a little more tricky than it sounds. It's not easy at all. It's quite a long process. First, the poo is created. Then it's collected. And finally, it gets processed. But it's well worth it. Lucky's paper is incredibly environmentally friendly, as not one tree is cut down to make it. And it's a technique that's being used all over the world. It's been done for a long time in Asia with elephant dung. And, and Australia with kangaroo. And, and we decided to, to make it out of, uh, out of our iconic Welsh sheep. Which is where Lucky comes in. She's one of our stars and she provides for us uh, very, very well. Once Lucky's done her business, the second step is the collection process, which today is being handled by the fearless sheep poo collectors. Malachi, Thomas, Theon, Ezra, Ruby. <laughs> Lucky's drafted in this crack team as they are some of the best poo collectors in the business. 
If she stands any chance of testing out her canoe today, then these are the guys Lucky needs. Let's collect some poo, yeah? Let's go. And there's no messing around. They're straight into action. Get your glove and scoop it into your, into your bucket. Okay. Yeah, that's your pile. OK, let's go and find some more piles, yeah? Some big lumps over here, guys. Over this way. Finally, all the poo has been collected. Phase two is over. But time is getting on, and there's still another stage left before the paper's made. They need to process the poo while it's still fresh enough to make paper. Back to the mill. OK, let's go, guys. Time is not on Lucky's side. Will she get to see her canoe launch? Later, will Lucky's dream of seeing her canoe float come true? I won't lie to you. I'm very anxious. But now, those kids who love animals, it's the... Animals! Yes! Let's meet the Fanimals, our animal detectives. Sophie, Sam, Jack, and Thomas. Today, the Fanimals are testing the myth that elephants are afraid of mice. Yes, legend has it that elephants are petrified of mice. But is this really the case? Tanya, the African elephant, has taken some time off her job as a herd leader to help the Fanimals discover the truth. They've come up with a great plan. They're going to plant a fake mouse in Tanya's enclosure with the help of a fishing rod. But will their tricky plan reel in Tanya? In goes the mouse. Good work, Fanimals. It's landed right by her feet, but what's she gonna make of it? Is she gonna run a mile? Uh, no. Far from it. She sees it and picks it up! He's trying to eat it! Scared? <laughs> he must be kidding. Let's see that again in slow motion. Yep, I don't think I've ever seen an elephant seem less scared. So, Fanimals, what's your conclusion? It's a myth that elephants are afraid of my... Myth busted. But the Fanimals aren't going to give up there. And now they're curious. Elephants clearly aren't scared of mice. But what are they afraid of? They're the world's largest land animal, but surely there's something that scares them. They're going to put Tanya face to face with some of the scariest things known to man to see if they frighten her. What about the supernatural? Many humans are scared of ghosts. So wouldn't an elephant be as well? The Fanimals put the ghost theory to the test with one of the most convincing ghosts you'll ever see. Uh, it's not just a Fanimal under a bed sheet. Honestly, it's not. Would you look at that? Tanya's nerves of steel shine through again. She's completely unfazed. The conclusion is clear. Elephants are not scared of ghosts. So it's been a groundbreaking day for the Fanimals. They've busted the myth that elephants are scared of mice and discovered that they don't get spooked by ghosts. So let's hear it for the Fanimals and Tanya the Elephant, the bravest team around. Now we're off to Hawaii in the USA. Meet Diesel, a British Bulldog, and a skateboarder. Diesel already has a reputation as one of the top skateboarders in Hawaii. I, I think he's pretty good at But he could be top dog if he could just learn some skate tricks. And stop chewing his board. Go, go, go. And today's the day. Diesel's going to attempt his first skateboard trick. Because he takes his job as an athlete seriously, he's preparing himself properly with the help of his coaching team, his owner, Sylvia, and his best friend, African Grey Parrot, Maui. Diesel, breakfast. Sylvia's in charge of Diesel's nutrition plan, ensuring he has all the energy he needs. Whilst Maui makes sure Diesel stays in peak physical condition by leading his workouts. Up the stairs. Back down the stairs. And repeat. 
Ooh, some people think bulldogs aren't athletic, but as you can see, they're great at running fast in short bursts, which is perfect for skateboarding. What's more, bulldogs also have a low center of gravity, which makes it a lot easier for them to balance on the board than the other taller species. Come on, D. It has to be said, skateboarding's a pretty unusual trick for a dog. Is it something he's learned from his human friends? Come on, Diesel! We did not teach Diesel how to skateboard. When Diesel first started skateboarding, he took the board away and would ride the board down the street with two feet on the board and one foot going, but all four feet would never be on the board. And then one day by accident, he put all four feet on. Then he realized he could ride the board on his own. Diesel's clearly a natural, but is skateboarding something that all bulldogs should try? I don't think other bulldog owners should get their dogs to ride skateboards unless it's something the bulldog wants to do. It should be something that they just do naturally. That's right. Bulldogs like Diesel like doing what they want when they want. If you try to force them to do anything, even on the board, you'll get stink eye. And it's a direct, dirty look. When he's on the board, that's pure happiness. And it's pure Diesel. You want a skateboard, don't you? I know you do. I know. Yes, Diesel's itching for his skateboard. So it's off to the skate park to meet up with his fellow skater boys. Remember, this is no normal day for Diesel. Today, he's going to attempt his first ever skate trick. A move called an ollie. This basic skateboard maneuver was named after a famous skateboarder named Ollie. To do an ollie, skaters jump with their back foot on the board's tail. They then drag the side of their front foot forward, and the board seems to stick to their feet. No problem, right, Diesel? This is his big moment. Here he goes. Okay, not quite an ollie, but that was just the warm up. Second time lucky. Hey, come on, Diesel. I don't think chewing on your board is what they meant when they said to shred it. This is it, last try. This is the one. Oh, not to the wall, not to the wall. Watch out for the wall. Oh, ouch. Poor Diesel, he's not even close. Doesn't look like he's becoming top dog today. Luckily, his friends don't mind. But well, we really love skating with him. He just livens up everything. So Diesel didn't quite get the hang of the ollie, but there's always tomorrow. Time to skate off into the sunset and all the way home. Presenting the show has taught me one thing. It's that animals uh, get a lot of work. That's why I'm setting up my own animal employment agency. Yeah. I'm gonna make a fortune. <laughs> the way it's gonna work, if someone needs an animal, I can get that animal for a very reasonable price, say three million pounds. Oh, no, no, wait, that's, that might be a little steep. <laughs> Two million pounds. Just waiting for those phone calls to come in. Any minute now, they're gonna come whizzing in. Obviously, with a new business, it takes time for the phone to ring. It takes time for word to get around. Best thing is, not to panic. <laughs> Why won't you ring? Ring! Ring! I never let stress get to me. Please ring! Please ring, ring! John Barrowman's Animal Employment Agency, no animal's too big or no job is too small. Yes! <laughs> it was a wrong number. <laughs> and now we're off to Singapore in tropical Southeast Asia. Deeg, 
A tapir from Singapore Zoo with a very important job. She's a mum. Whilst all mums are important, Deeg is a mother with a difference. She's been given the job of helping save her species from extinction. Tapirs are unique and beautiful creatures, but due to hunting and deforestation, they have become endangered. This means there's a chance they could die out and be lost forever. The Malayan tapir are listed as endangered. There are only about 1,500 to 2,000 left in the wild. Uh, the cause of their decline is due to habitat loss and in some part of Sumatra, they have been sold as bushmeat. Bushmeat is the meat from wild animals, and as no one wants this family to be eaten, one way we can help the tapirs survive is to breed them in captivity. But for a program like that to work, it needs great mums. And luckily, tapir mums don't get any better than Deeg. Since becoming part of the breeding program, Deeg met Merg, the zoo's dominant male, fell in love and made it. That might all sound simple enough, but there's nothing straightforward about the mating ritual they went through. You could say it's a little weird. A female tapir will have a weed, and then the male will sniff it. From the smell, the male can tell if the female is likely to get pregnant. If she is, the male will do one himself. And if they're both happy, they'll mate. Luckily, it worked out for Deeg and Merg. They've managed to do their bit for tapir breeding by producing this little cutie, Meat Baby Shakti. The youngest tapir we have here is Shakti. She's about seven months old now. Shakti is a very smart, you know, baby. Along with the other tapirs bred here, Shakti is one of the last hopes of her species. This is exactly what makes Deeg's job so important, as a world without tapirs would certainly be a duller place. One of their most unique characteristics is their long noses or trunks, which they use to help them eat. The nose is just basically a formation of the upper lip. They basically use it for sniffing and checking out the surroundings. Tapirs may look and eat like pigs, but they're actually more related to horses and rhinoceroses. Keeping tapirs around is clearly as important a job as you can get, and it's lucky that Deeg is so committed to it. She's 100% dedicated to ensuring that Shakti grows up to become a mum herself and make more babies to help the tapir population along. This means that mother and daughter have a very special relationship. The both of them, they're very close. They get to do everything together. You know. Like most mums, Deeg ensures that Shakti is brought up to be well-mannered and makes sure that she eats all her veg, so she grows up strong. She's probably about 180 kilos right now. That's about the weight of an American football player. When she's not eating or exercising, Shakti does enjoy something else. She likes to be scratched. Thankfully, Shakti is growing up fit, healthy, and active. And in a few years, we'll be doing her bit for a tapir breeding. This helps ensure that these amazing creatures are around for a long time. And it's all thanks to Dee, one of the most important mums in the world. It's not just today that animals have had jobs. In fact, history reveals that in the past, they've had even more amazing jobs than today. And here are those, history's heroes! Hello, my little history lovers. I am the greatest animal historian in the world, Professor John Bumbleman. And today we are looking at history's grossest heroes. Look away now if you're squeamish, as I count down the grossest animal jobs known to man or animal. First up are the sweet nightingales who worked in Japan during the 18th century. The nightingales worked for the geishas who performed elaborate tea ceremonies for the rich and famous. These women all had a very distinctive look, but the thick white makeup wasn't very good for their skin, which is where the nightingale stepped in, or rather, plopped in. Their job? It was a big one. Well, a big two. Number two, that is. Their poo was used by the geisha to moisturize and soothe their face. 
Ugh. Now, time for a tale of historic herbal tea. Oh, delicious. In the 1700s, beavers had to watch their behinds in case someone found a job for their, well, their behinds. Beavers have hard blobs near their tails. These blobs are called castorium, which is dried scent secreted from the glands they use to mark their territory. This castorium was scraped off the beavers and then brewed into a medicinal tea believed to cure headaches and fevers. Moving on. The prize for the grossest job goes to the animal who helped make incense for the ancient Egyptians. Step forward or float forward. The sperm whale. This job involved a lot of guts. Whale vomit, in fact. Sperm whales need to eat a ton of food every single day. That's almost the weight of two cows or about 15 people. So it's no surprise they get a touch of indigestion every now and then. Rather than blurbering about it, they just throw up! This gooey stick eventually dries, hardens, and then becomes sweet smelling. The Egyptians would collect the dried puke so they could burn it as incense to make their home smell nice. And that concludes this week's History's Heroes! <laughs> And finally, let's head back to Snowdonia in North Wales. Welsh Mountain Sheep Lucky makes... Super Poo! Lucky's poo is turned into eco-friendly paper and used for many things. It's even helped build a canoe. But there's been a disaster. On its first attempt in the water, the canoe started to sink. Finally, the repairs have been carried out. And this afternoon, the boat will be hitting the water again. I won't lie to you. I'm very anxious. We really don't know if this is going to work or not. It's a huge day for Lucky, but there's a problem. Before she can get to the canoe launch, Lucky needs to make more poo to meet her daily papermaking order. And even though she's drafted in the help of the fearless sheep poo collectors, she's still running out of time. Wearing protective clothing, they've collected the droppings, but they still need to turn them into paper. Yeah, OK, let's go. There's no time to waste as they head to the paper mill with Les, who show them the ropes. Here's the poo, guys. We're gonna put it all into the one bucket. One. First, the poo is weighed. Okay, just over five kilograms. That's a lot. That's a lot of poo. And then put in a pillowcase. We don't lose any of our precious fibers. Next, the poo is boiled. Okay, so now we're gonna... Removing all the bad stuff, which could make you sick. Why do we need to boil? We need to boil it to get rid of all the bacteria to make it safe for people to handle. After being boiled, it's washed. After it's been boiled, we put it into the washing machine. And now it looks very different. In fact, it now looks nothing like poo. So this is the clean washed poo, guys. Anybody want to have a touch? It doesn't smell or anything. It smells nice, actually. The fibers get beaten into a pulp. Ready? We have power! And finally, the pulp is formed into sheets, which, when dried, will become Lucky's paper. But wait a minute. How does this become this? Well, the sheep poo paper makers built the canoe frame and then, using flour and water glue, applied three layers of paper made from Lucky's poo. They finished off the interior with beeswax and the exterior with resin made of soya beans. Pretty eco-impressive. At last, the paper is dried, so Lucky's work is done, and she may be um, in luck. It's going to be close, but it looks like there's enough time to get to the jetty for the canoe launch. It's a mad dash, but she gets there with minutes to spare. But now for the real test of nerves. Have the repairs worked? Will the canoe finally float? I'm very nervous, very nervous. We had a big leak last time, um, and it was quite catastrophic. We've put extra layers of resin on since the, the first uh, troubled mission. I won't lie to you. I'm very anxious. Remember that the stakes are high. If the repairs have been a success, Lucky and the canoe builders plan to paddle across the English Channel to France. 
Okay, it's showtime. This is the big moment. The tension couldn't be any higher. The poo paper makers put the canoe in the water. They're climbing on board. Lucky looks on with her heart in her throat. She can hardly look. And would you believe it? It floats! There's not a leak in sight as the paper makers do a lap of honor around the lake. Not a chance of that bad boy stinking, I mean sinking. The fearless poo collectors are impressed. And Lucky, well, she couldn't be happier. She's faced the busiest day of her career and it couldn't have worked out any better. Have you ever seen a sheep looking so proud? And she's every right to be. She's helped build a canoe out of poo. And that's simply amazing. Collecting sheep poop is an exhausting job. I mean, look how many they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, tw